Messy, messy, messy. He just moved in yesterday and I didn't have any time to clean up or to unpack or just to do anything. Don't apologize. I like messy. You do? Mm -hmm. It gives a slob <laughs> like me a good feeling. <laughs> I mean, uh, your kitchen doesn't come up to mine. I still take the prize for messiness. <laughs> I never imagined Dr. Harper married to, to a slob. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> can't believe that you got four pages of notes oh, out God. of this movie. <laughs> God help me. I'm going to count it off here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Hello, This is the Doomed Show. In case I sound very prepared, it's because I am excited to make use of these four pages of useless notes I've taken on the following <laughs> film. But more important than paper is Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. Yeah, um, I, I also took... Um... Well, see, I took four and a half pages of notes, so I win. Um, it's, not but I, I did, I, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. Well, maybe it is, though. And I won. <laughs> I just copy pasted walks down hallway, walks up staircase, yes. and I got a lot of Damn. A, lot of, a lot of real estate out of that. Yeah, my, my hand is getting tired from taking notes because I still write on paper because I'm a cool dude. Folks, we are back to attempt another. Uh, we'll see how many we do this year. Another. <laughs> grouping i won't say a a, a gathering or a a, a murder <laughs> gaggle. a gaggle mm -hmm. or a murder of shot on video uh, horror films like we did last year uh, but this one jumped out at me a while ago and unfortunately it jumped back into my brain as we were discussing uh sov horror for this <laughs> summer once again yeah, this one is uh I'd never heard of this movie, so this is a you pick. Yeah, oh absolutely. Um, no, I am taking yes. full responsibility, not <laughs> trying to to volley the blame. Uh what we're talking about is Night of Terror from 1986, aka Escape from the Insane Asylum. And I'm confused because I, you know, I found this on YouTube. For some reason on YouTube there's an hour and 45 minute version which we are not talking about tonight. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were talking about the hour and a half version, which uh, I sort of found what I thought was a massacre video release of this online, but then there's no trace of this actually getting a real release anywhere that I can find. Curious. Yeah. yeah. I, again, I've never even heard of it, um, mm -hmm. despite being familiar with the uh, uh, the the filmic contributions of uh, of its creators in other films I, yes. this one has totally escaped my notice until you brought it up <laughs> I, I i think that that's a shame in some ways yeah because uh, this is a wild one yeah this is bonkers uh we're talking about renee Harmon. uh renee Harmon is uh, an actress slash uh multiple other duties um i fear that she may have done the makeup on people in this movie because <laughs> everyone has her blush uh, I was dying with this freaking makeup job here. Uh, but yeah, she's a writer, producer, um, and I thought she directed something, but I don't see any directing credits. Uh, but she definitely um, was all about Frozen Scream, which a film is a film I love. Yeah. Very much. Uh, but this, at the outset, 
feels like a secret sequel to <laughs> Frozen Scream because sure enough, Renee Harmon is back in this movie in a leading role. Um, and they're using clips of a <laughs> 11 year younger <laughs> herself in clips from Frozen Scream. And mm-hmm. uh, I, they're totally not connected at all. No, not even in the just slightest. filler, just filler. And not even a like a significant amount of filler, which is the really weird thing to me because this is this is more or less a full complete film exactly that they just put about two minutes of Frozen Scream into. I got really worried when I started this because I don't know if you know this, but I hate clip show movies, especially if it's a movie I I I would rather be watching like Frozen Scream. (laughs) I did not want to see clips from it, and then they abandoned them completely after like 10 or 15 minutes very strange especially because yeah it does not fit in any way i mean <laughs> on on the very granular granular level of film stock uh, cuz of course this is a shot on video film mm-hmm. and frozen scream was not no. um it just it doesn't match it doesn't fit there's no coherent reason for it so yeah great i mean I, if actually if i have a complaint it's either that it uh the movie the movie either did included that stuff at all which it probably shouldn't have <laughs> or uh, that it didn't do more of it. Like if it just did more of it and like the entire movie Frozen Scream shows up in here in one form or another, that would be preferable in some ways to what they do. Yeah, I want to find a trailer for this thing, but sure enough, no. No. I... There's no trailer for this. But instead, I'm going to play a little piece of music from a little band in this movie. And oh they're called God. The Ins and Outs. So... uh <laughs> Here, here's a little clip from uh, this band, Ins and Outs, for you to get you hyped about this movie, which maybe you can find if you look on VHS. I mean, uh, YouTube VHS, whatever. <laughs> Go find this movie on your own, people. You can do it. to admit i do love this band and their music uh it's it's like pinnacle pinnacle new wave um i i missed their name um so i was just referring to them as simpler minds <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say uh lead singer looks kind of like uh, a young frank black from uh, the pixies ah, slightly okay. different singing style of course yeah a little bit <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, But I did manage to find what I think is a promotional poster from this this production company, their video pictures. And here's what it says on this promotional poster, which is gorgeous. Um, It says, They killed her, but she refused to stay dead. When you're on the cutting edge of brain research, things are (laughs) bound to go wrong. Can the teenagers, the psychic, the nurse, the doctors, the patients... The party guests, the rock band, and the street people all survive this haunted night of terror. Probably not many. Can Um, they? Oh, my God. I would say a surprising number of them actually do survive. Yes. Um. Absolutely, they do. (laughs) I would also say that some of those, like the rock band, not not terribly involved in the uh, proceedings. Um, But that's actually a pretty good summation. Of, yeah. of the film and all of the the myriad um uh avenues of of inquiry that this explores there's a lot going on here to all say right. the least there's a there's a there's a dot com on this poster for www.videopicturescorp.com and i have just typed it in and i'm going to enter hit enter now so folks okay. if this show ends here it's because I have been kidnapped by my my new Russian bride satellites. Well, uh, videopictures.com uh, actually uh, yeah. redirects to fear.com. So. Oh, well, Video Pictures Corp. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it says <laughs> uh, it's one of those awesome server-not-found sites. Mm. 
So not well, so much information. <laughs> they found you, but you didn't yeah. find them. Well, this opens up with uh, some piano music and some various images that come flashing on the screen, um, including a, a hooded man who looks vaguely like the uh, the um, Zodiac killer standing in a window. Yes, yes. And some other strange flashes that, you know, we don't really get a chance to get anything as we see our very simple video pictures corp. Uh, presents Night of Terror or Escape from the Insane Asylum. Neither of which are good titles, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Night of Terror just reminds me of Night of Horror. Night of Horror is the one that had the really scary, stretchy neck zombie on the cover Mm. that apparently is really, really rough, like really bad moving. My problem with it is that it's it's just so generic that I immediately forget it every time. I, it was hard for me to find this movie on my hard drive because I kept forgetting what it was called. Yes. Um, An Escape from the Insane Asylum, I guess, does technically happen, but it, pretty early and it's not that important. And it, it sounds like Escape from a Women's Prison, which is also a movie. Yes. And the artwork is similar for both. So I don't know what they were going for there. <sighs> <laughs> tricking people into renting them is what the, yeah, the goal was uh, so we have two lovers uh, we have Inez a, a beautiful blonde lady whose hair is teased out several feet from her ears <laughs> she has um uh, what I would describe as beauty and the beast hair except she's beast <laughs> uh, but she's uh, she's romance being romanced by Alex um, and this this is a uh, Alex, played by Henry Lewis, um, Huey's father. Yes, uh, uh-huh. Doctor Doctor Huey Lewis's father, <laughs> Doctor Alex. Yeah, um, Doctor Doctor, give me the news. I've got a bad case of love in you. That's a Huey Lewis song. Don't look it up. Sports, sports. So, <laughs> oh yeah, um, American Psycho reference. He's explaining to Inez uh, that he can't divorce his wife, Chris, who we'll meet very shortly. Uh, because there's too much at stake. And I wrote in my notes, there's too, the number too, much at stake, S-T-E-A-K, because I'm very clever. Well, and the S is actually subbed out for a money sign. Yes. Um, yeah, because that's why he can't. Uh, we'll find out that it's because she had got money. Yeah, yeah. She's going to she's be She's going to be funding some research, and uh, we're going to see all, all kinds of research happening. <laughs> you know what they say, women be funding. <laughs> That's weird, though, because I give Lietta my paycheck, so I don't really know. I'd be funding, too. Mm, yeah, I don't, it doesn't count. As I'll explain later, I don't like fund it icing, or fond it, which oh, sort of sounds oh. like fundin'. I believe it's pronounced fondant. Fondant. So fondant. As, as she's telling him... Oh, you can't uh, break up with me because I have some very important facts about you that Chris would want to know. So she's almost trying to blackmail him, but then a hooded man approaches. And uh, (laughs) when she sees him, he tries to calm her down. And when that doesn't work, he whips out his little needle. The hypodermic. And gives her a shot and she's out of there. Okay, so a lot of things here in this in this scene uh, really draw my attention. Mm. First up, the fact that this is like their makeout place. It is a is this the McFarland farmhouse? I bet it is. I bet it, it probably is. is right. I mean, yep. it's hard to say because it's all very dark, but it's just covered in cobwebs, and this is where they choose to go and mac out slash murder each other. He does some weird courtship thing, like they're they're kissing, but he also is just like stroking her lips. Yes, like you do. Like you do. Um, it's very sort of like a John Travolta out of uh, Face Off type <laughs> move. Yeah. And uh, the other really weird thing here, besides the fact that, you know, before her death, she's just staring at the Zodiac Killer, who does nothing, by the way. He's just nope. there as a distraction. I he guess. likes to do that in this movie. Yeah, yeah. I like to watch. Oh, bless uh, his heart. <laughs> she's wearing what I can only describe as a wedding dress. Yes. I thought it was their wedding night when this movie started. Yeah, no, not quite. Not quite. Uh, the deading night. What? We we cut to our, our title credits here, uh, scrolling, or, or just flying at the screen amazingly over the, uh, who I call Nurse Wrench. She's not quite a Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> uh, but she's walking around what I call the Hotel Hospital, because this, this hospital or, or medical facility just looks like a shitty old hotel to me. 
But she's walking along, and we find out that this is written and produced by the aforementioned Renee Harmon, uh, a German actress who, the first thing she did when she came to the United States, aside from you know getting into filmmaking, is she dropped her accent cold. <laughs> Became one <laughs> yep, of the she... most American-sounding people ever. <laughs> I mean, I-, I hate to make this comparison, but she is sort of like a Tommy Wiseau type figure. Like, both in her ambition and in her very distinctive vocal <laughs> delivery. Um, she's a treasure. Yeah, I gotta say, um, she is just a wonder to behold. Her acting in this is just grand. Just grand. I mean, this is, having seen several other Renee Harmon pictures, this is actually one of her better performances. Oh, like, wow. it's it's very staid in comparison to some of the others, like uh, Lady Street Fighter, where she is, like... She is. So, you know, that scene in Nightmare on Elm Street where um, Nancy's talking on the phone and Freddie's tongue comes through the phone. Yes. She does that with her tongue to a phone in that movie. <laughs> um, it's uh, uh, disturbing. Let's wow. Say. Uh, so, yeah, this is a much more restrained uh, performance from her. Nice, because I've seen her in The Executioner Part 2 and I've seen her in... See, I can never remember if I've seen Lady Street Fighter or Sister Street Fighter. Was Sister Street Fighter is the Hong Kong Kung Fu movie. <laughs> yeah, Lady Street Fighter is not Hong Kong. <laughs> okay. Weirdly enough, um, folks at home who know my obsession with uh, softcore pornography, you know I've seen Cinderella 2000 because a company sent me the DVD to renew and I was like really enjoying the movie um until it got really creepy and sad i love cinderella 2000 it's a great movie it has a creepy and sad part that made me feel bad inside but yeah other than that um (laughs) she's in that she's in that that's important really yeah she plays the widow i did not know that yeah i need to look for her I, i guess so so um we get a clip from frozen scream And I wrote in my notes, I'm not writing this shit down, Jeffrey. Screw you, buddy. No, I actually did not write them down to spare us uh, a three-hour episode on this freaking movie. Yeah, it also doesn't matter. Yeah, Um, totally. Again, you can just close your eyes and take like a micro nap. Oh, dude. (gasps) I love micro naps. Yeah, me too. It's the only way to escape Freddy. Dude, I've taken four since we started tonight. This is great. Uh, Then we get to meet Paul. Paul is a patient. (laughs) Um, he is, uh, he's comatose in this hospital, uh, he's, even though uh, he's awake. Yeah. He seems very much it, like he's, he's, he's mirroring his performance on Patrick. Um, so this is like a, a, a Paul still lives type scenario. <laughs> um, just, you know, staring blankly up in the screen for some reason. I don't know why, but when they first introduced him, I thought his name was Tom. So I kept referring to him as Tom in my notes, but yeah, it's definitely Paul. Now, Paul is such a Tom though. Oh my God. Paul, Paul, Dick, and Tom, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, then we get a sensitive portrayal of the mentally ill as we're <laughs> in this mental hospital and we got all kinds of crazy characters interacting with each other. You have a, a lady who looks like a like a bald, like mystical woman of some kind. I wait, wait, wait. I thought that I thought this was a bo- this was board game club. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Did you join a board game club and realize, oh, no, I'm in an in an asylum oh, by no. accident? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's always happening to me. Why does this keep crappening to me? My favorite of all these these characters, of course, is uh, Santa Claus, who's uh, he's he's being accused <laughs> of cheating at chess with his partner. And I just oh, my God, it was so beautiful. You should uh, pipe in his great delivery of um, I did not. <laughs> Oh yes, I I will uh, probably be dropping some very beautiful uh, sound bites from this movie because there's a lot of great stuff in this. Sh- if you can, w- like honestly, folks, the first 15 minutes of this movie are the worst part of like for podcasters <laughs> <laughs> yes. trying to take notes on this shit is crazy. And I was I was determined to not let it affect the enjoyment my enjoyment of this film. I may not be able to affect your enjoyment but uh renee is is uh renee Harmon who plays chris uh she's having a little chit chat with her lawyer because she believes that she's no longer uh belonging 
to this gaggle of uh, insane people. She wants to get out, uh, but he is uh, very explicit in ex- explaining that her doctor, uh, Dr. Harper, Dr. Seymour Harper, I love the name Seymour in a movie, and uh, he, he says that she's not ready to get out. Have we established that Chris is also the other doctor's wife? Yes. So, so Doctor Harper is yeah. <laughs> Doctor Harper is partnering with um, Doctor uh, Nilsson. Yeah, yeah. Doctor yeah. Nilsson. Alex is our gentleman at the very beginning of the movie. Who you know they didn't want to reveal he was the bad guy too soon, so they waited <laughs> approximately one minute to reveal that he's a villainous <laughs> character. But yes, he's partnered uh-huh. with with Alex, her husband. Um, and they both believe that she should stay in this insane asylum because her in inha- the inheritance that she's or her just her money, the vague corporation that she seems to run, um, is funding their quote unquote research. Yes, their um, their extreme brain research where they are trying to cure retardation. Yes, that's their goal. Pure science fiction, if you ask me, like landing a man on the moon. <laughs> It reminds me of this quote coming up. Money is the root of all research. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> their their goal is very unclear. Like, why are they trying? I guess, like, they just want to make money. Yeah, they, they have this experimental procedure, but they're, they're villains because, of course, they're using human subjects yes. in order to test this stuff, um, which always involves lobotomies for some reason. <laughs> At one at one point they called him like a like a run of the mill lobotomy or something. <laughs> it was so funny. They're probably just like psychological sadists or something. I don't know. Mm. Doctor Harper is confronted by Paul's mother Celeste. Now I really wasn't expecting this lady to be a major character, but she <laughs> no, is she... <laughs> a a psychic who's who's Paul's mother, and she's very worried about her son who's in this quote-unquote comatose state and she'll be back many many times but paul is just just like laughs at her accusations and then has her physically removed from the building celeste is great she's like um everybody's uh jewish and or italian uh fortune telling aunt everybody yeah Yeah. everybody's got one yep when uh, Chris is kind of like just hanging out after failing to convince her lawyer to get her out of there, uh, she meets a guy who tells her about, uh, he's the model builder guy. He's sitting there with glue and like a wooden airplane or something. He's failing to build it. And he calls her over and he tells her about this murder that he witnessed. And they immediately cut to another clip from Frozen <laughs> Screen. <laughs> uh, she has nothing to do with anything. So then next thing you know, Paul. He murders a male nurse. He gets out of his comatose state and freaking murders a guy. Then he's out of there. He's he's escaped. I mean, he just got a little excited. That's pretty much what he tells his mother yep. later on. Like, you know, these things happen. <laughs> the strange editing of this movie happens here where Dr. Alex and Dr. Seymour Harper, they just they hear about this escape. They've heard that freaking Paul has escaped. And then they show them finding the body of the dead male nurse as though the discovery of the body wasn't the way they knew that he'd escaped. It was very strange. So Uh we're going to have another moment later in this movie where it is really obvious that they had a different order of events in mind. And the editor said, "Mm -mm, I can fix this (laughs) just to keep things exciting, if not wildly confusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we have Chris giving herself a pep talk in the mirror. Chris has image issues. Um, she has she has a fear of aging, and she will will confess about why this fear of aging kind of led her down the path that she's been on since she married uh, Doctor Alex. She pulls um um what is that movie uh Wild at Heart. Oh, where she's, oh ta- yeah. she's talking at herself in the mirror and then she's adjusting her makeup and starts to smear lipstick on her cheeks, which barely shows up because of all the rouge <laughs> that is already on her cheeks. And she's screaming and man, her like getting wild is so fun. I love this part. It's very this subtle. Is when she, uh, she becomes Jokerified. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to shoot Robert De Niro. 
Well, she she sees her first ghostly apparition during yes. this scene um, <laughs> as uh, Inez with her <laughs> uh, with her windswept uh, beast mane flowing behind her <laughs> pops up in the mirror and uh, just sort of floats. My favorite thing about this is they had one shot of this actress with the the fan blowing and her like <laughs> wispy gothic look to her and she has this look on her face that has no emotion um she looks like one of the post lobotomy people she's just uh, like just kind of staring and they reuse that over and over again even when she's supposed to be speaking to chris from beyond the grave she's always just got this same look on her face it's wonderful yep they release Chris into the wild. They, they, for some reason, they have to <laughs> declare her sane before they can declare her insane again, and then do the experimental <laughs> procedure, which is what are they called? What the run of the mill lobotomy? Re, uh, or I think it's routine. Routine, routine lobotomy. lobotomy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a oh convoluted plan. Let's say the least. God, it's so uh, good. But I love that. I love the idea of them taking one look at her with like the lipstick all over her face. And they're like, oh, looks like you're cured. She's you're ready to, go, to be bro. released. Uh, so her stepdaughter, Becky, shows up. And uh, what I love about Becky is that she, among a lot of other people in this movie, seemed to know more about the outside world and especially Inez. Everybody <laughs> knew about Dr. Alex and Inez, about their affair literally everyone and everyone has the same restraint with uh, with spilling the beans which is none <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love i love later on when somebody's like wow we really thought alex was a bachelor oh my god it's, that's such a horrible thing to say to somebody oh my god <laughs> uh, so so when when becky shows up her and uh, Chris start jumping for joy, packing her suitcase, like and going freedom, freedom. And <laughs> so she she gets her out of the freaking uh, the home uh, and to take her to her home, and which is you know we'll get to that. Oh my god, I'm excited about that. But meanwhile, Paul, our uh, ineffectual murderer here, um, he is now in a black jumpsuit. <laughs> Um, he looks like a character from V if the characters from V were all wearing black instead of red. And he's trying to uh, hitchhike unsuccessfully. Yeah, the black jumpsuit has like some weird stitching on it that makes it look or like maybe even padding that just yes, makes like it a, look otherworldly. Maybe yes. like a motorcycle. It's either a motorcycle outfit or something you mm -hmm. wear when you've joined a cult who is going to like send you off to space or something. I think it's what you wear under your Power Rangers armor. <laughs> what do you mean if you mean when bro uh, i don't you didn't say if no, i never, didn't no. never mind forget <laughs> it oh boy he's he's actually following chris and becky around town and that's going to be really important later maybe in the sequel if this had one <laughs> uh they they meet paul's mom at a shop so they're in this weird place in california that looks like a rustic kind of hippie town but like yeah. gentrified, you know what I mean? Well, the uh, the shop advertises outside woodcraft and bric-a-brac. <laughs> oh my God, all the bric-a-brac is in this movie. Oh, it's so good. But they, they meet her and uh, she mentions something about their future. Like, don't go to the house. Don't, <laughs> well, she, says, uh, she says to them, I, I know things, I feel things. And then Becky looks right into the camera and goes, are you psychic? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Oh, she gives them the, the most vaguest of warnings about going to this house. Right after they leave, Paul bursts in and he's like, mom, mom, it's me. And she's so happy to see him, but she's really worried about her son because he was supposed to be comatose back at the <laughs> hospital. But now he's just talking crazy talk. And he says, mom, can I stay with you? Will you make me apple fritters? <laughs> it's so great. Like, and his voice is weird. I will play that part. Yeah, I, oh I wrote down. I, I was curious at first if he was dubbed because it's like a little boy voice. Yeah. He, um, but no, that's his acting. real voice. Yeah. Wow. Paul, what are you doing here? Hi, Mom. I'm home. I've run away. I'm working my fingers to the bone to get you well. 
and you've run away. You're going straight back to the hospital. I can't go back. I've... Disorderly. He was a bastard. He deserved. I didn't want to do it. I had to. Oh, my God. What have they done to you? Mom, I want to stay with you. Let me think. And you'll fix me apple fritters? They're renting this old place that's supposedly haunted, and as they're getting ready, or excuse me, as uh, Chris is unpacking, Becky brings her a freaking Polaroid. It's like, Mom, look at this. And she takes the photo from her from her stepdaughter and goes, huh, wow, you got yourself a spirit on camera, and hands the picture back to her, and she's like, really? <laughs> Chris starts hearing uh, strange sounds, and uh, more kooky stuff starts happening, but we're interrupted with yet another clip. From Frozen Scream. It's probably like our last one, right? I hope so. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) But this whole hallucination she's having of the film Frozen Scream is she saw this weirdly but not vaguely racist uh, mask (laughs) hanging from the ceiling. It was so not what I wanted to see in this movie. Did you say not vaguely racist? Because I would say... Totally vaguely racist. Yeah, uh, I would say not vaguely. <laughs> totally. Yes. Oh, not vaguely. I understand. Yeah, I yeah understand. no, it's totally yeah. a racist. But it, at least it didn't like conjure up any like racist sequences. It's just more clips of Frozen Scream. Yeah, but you know what? Just uh, uh, watching the film as we're talking, as I do, yes. I did notice that there were some masks that looked kind of like that in the bric-a-brac store. Ooh. So I wonder if that's where they got it from. Paul, but Paul has been. Uh, swiping from his mom's supply you know it also looks a little bit like one of like a racist version of one of those uh spitting witches remember from uh i don't remember which movie it was we talked about that had a spitting witch in it It spit the water out and it cackled oh oh um that was from uh the one at the lake uh blood lake blood lake oh, another shot on video <laughs> you, you know the lake with blood in it yeah the, 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 yeah, the blood lake i forgot to mention um our director uh felix felix gerard um, he has a, a really nice picture of himself up on uh, IMDb standing next to a film camera. and But this shot on video movie is his only credit. <laughs> yeah, so when did that happen? Felix, um, what's going on, buddy? Wasn't, wasn't here. I tried searching for him <laughs> outside of IMDb and I got nothing. Oh, no, man. Too bad. Who is this man? So while, while Chris is snooping around the house at night, um, she hears some more sounds and then she goes into one of the rooms that hasn't been unpacked yet of this haunted house. And she finds a painting of a, like a really terrible painting of what I think is supposed to be a native American. And then of course the ghastly appearance, oh, excuse me, ghostly and definitely not ghastly, <laughs> uh, appearance of <laughs> our pal Inez looking exactly the same as she did before trying to give Chris a message. Maybe, maybe not. Stink eye or message, hard to say. Uh, the next morning, uh, Chris has more visions. This time she sees a, a veggie patty, what looks like a veggie patty on a plate that turns into a dead rat. Uh, not a real dead rat, because of course they couldn't afford a real dead rat in this movie, thank God. And then um, a, a plate or a teacup in a plate is shattered on the ground and then <gasps> magically disappears. There's memories of... of past events are like recurring over and over again just like uh a different movie and meanwhile uh i had nowhere to go with that paul is lurking more which is what he likes to do he's lurking with his executioner's mask on yes. outside of this house and he's making a lot of noise <laughs> so much so that uh chris does hear him and starts saying to him uh, a potential killer she's just like Go away. Don't bother me. <laughs> Go away. I love this. I'm, I love I'm it. Tired. Then, out of nowhere, Eleanor shows up, one of my favorite characters in this movie. Uh, Eleanor is Dr. Harper's wife, so Seymour's wife. Uh, she just pops in, and they have a very strange conversation. Um, she introduces herself, and she has the blush, the killer freaking uh sprayed on 
uh, blush that all these women in this movie and some men have. And Lietta, without prompting, looks at the TV and goes, wow, did she get shot with Homer's makeup shotgun? (laughs) Which is a deep cut. I like that. I'm glad she remembered that. That was very nice. But uh, yeah, Eleanor's super judgy about how they're not done unpacking yet. And she literally says, messy, messy, messy. But then she also says, I like messy because it makes me feel better about my place. I'm a slob. She confesses to being a slob. (laughs) But I was thinking of uh, Frosty the Snowman. Messy, messy, messy. (laughs) There you go. She asks, like, so how are you doing in this house? Is, Is everything okay? And she's like, tell me. Is this house haunted? She's like, oh, no, no. I meant like there's like bad electrical and shit, dude. (laughs) (laughs) And then she's asking her about supernatural stuff. And Eleanor's like, oh, don't let Seymour hear you talking about that shit. Like, I don't know why I didn't expect any cursing to happen in this movie. But (laughs) when she drops the S word, I was like, what? Like, it shocked me. It was so cute. (laughs) Well, everything else is so wholesome. Yes. Just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now we cut to a gaggle of one of our favorite things in in Hello, This is the Doom show uh, in the the H exclamation point (laughs) T-I-T-D-S frickin' dictionary um, as quoted by Brad. A bunch of good time Charlies. They are that. They're not. They're not um, idiots. No, no. They're barely funsters. Yeah. These kids are at the pool. Excuse me, this time they're at the hot tub. We'll get to the pool later. We get a lot of pool time. Um, But they're all sitting on the same side of the the hot tub with their feet in the hot tub just so the camera guy doesn't have to work too hard and get a bunch of setups. And (laughs) they're, they're excited about don't get, I don't get any of these people's names. Is Becky one of the friends? Yeah, Becky's. Thank you. I mean, because that's why they're in the movie. Because okay. otherwise, it would make no sense why these Thank teens you. were just around all the time. Yeah, they, I think Becky's I wearing to. like a like a cheetah print uh, bikini in this one. There you scene. go. Yeah. So they want to go to this old, uh, this old haunted house, the the this haunted place called the McFarland Place, the old McFarland mm-hmm. Place. Uh, it's a farm. They describe oh. it as a farm. And, and then, just as soon as they get started talking about going to the place uh they cut to nighttime and now there's this cool band by the pool the now legendary ins and outs <laughs> so it's the same pool yep. yeah because it's oh, yeah. at their house they're having well, like a housewarming is this well, i'm curious to know is this the same house from freaking frozen scream is this renee Harmon's house that's what I'm i was wondering. hoping it was the same house from boarding house oh shit <laughs> it's definitely not that house, but yes, maybe they're in the same neighborhood. Oh my god! Oh boy! Uh, but they have like a they have like a Mexican themed bar, or is it Native American themed bar? I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, it is definitely uh, cult- cultural appropriation by this bar. Freaking... <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh boy! But this band, I love this sequence with this band. It's so fun and so like. I wasn't. I was still on the fence about this movie, but as soon as we got to the teenagers and the band, I was sold, boy. Not yeah. to show my hand too quickly, but this is when the movie hits its stride, if it even, if it ever had one ever. Yeah, about thirty minutes in. Yeah, <laughs> the band is playing. Seymour is pouring drinks at the the tiki bar here, and uh, the band is singing the immortal song. Why do we close the door of love? Oh, excuse me. Why do we close the door on love? Which makes me think of slamming your privates in a door. Richard, love is the only feeling we'll ever know. <laughs> well, that's certainly true of you and I. Yeah. Yeah. We get some social faux pas at the uh, freaking party where the, the, the lady, the rando lady is like, you're Chris, Alex's wife. I thought he was a bachelor. <laughs> we thought you were a myth and she almost drops the inez name but don't worry eleanor will pick up the slack in a little bit Mm. and uh paul's mom crashes the party (laughs) again uh celeste our our, our freaking psychic confronts seymour again and is immediately removed from the party Mm. (laughs) then eleanor like just starts spilling the beans about inez and then the saddest shit ever. Chris 
confesses to marrying Alex out of desperation. Oof. And because she, her beauty was fading and she was lonely and, you know, being rich uh, makes you lonely. So she married him just for the hell of it. And of course, this led to all the horrible shit in her life now. And she says <sighs> a bold faced lie. She's Chris lies on camera. She says, come on, Eleanor. I am not a computer. <laughs> I mean, all evidence points to the contrary. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> like because eleanor has like all this this weird impression of her like i thought you'd be really cold and aloof and just like because your <laughs> shithead husband's been talking shit about you since you've been in the mental asylum <laughs> and then the keyboardist they show the keyboardist of uh of the ins and outs and this poor dude has the blush on Oof. he has been hit with homer's makeup shotgun <laughs> he's got his sunglasses on his hat pulled down probably trying to pull it down over his face so he won't be recognized oh my god i love this part do, do we not see a makeup credit in the i closing forgot to, I, after all of my joking about the makeup mm -hmm. i forgot to look yeah we're gonna have to look i'm hoping i'm hoping that's uh freaking <laughs> oh god just Renee. add another credit to her list makeup department uh deborah martell that sounds like a dodgy name to me. Yeah, it's fake. I'm, I'm, like, I'm checking to see if she was also in the movie. <laughs> it's like one of the teenagers <laughs> or something. Um, oh, that did, would be great too. She did makeup on Executioner Part 2, so I'll have to go back and uh, watch for the freaking uh, the makeup in that one. Intriguing. Yeah. Seymour pulls Eleanor to the side because he kind of overhears the convo between her and Chris. And he's like, watch how you talk to that psychotic and he just like he basically warns her like he s scares her into silence loudly at a party with other people mm -hmm. then um we cut to him explaining what he and dr alex are up to to some random guy who showed up to the tiki bar and he's threatening him too and it's like oh don't worry alex is out picking up street people for our test subjects excuse me they're referred to in a much nicer way uh he says quote unquote nice anonymous street people <laughs> oh boy next that's respect that's respect <laughs> very uh, specific respect uh our good time charlie's the party's died down uh the band is gone and they're trying to decide what to do and they decide on on oh, they almost decide on a pizza party and they don't call it ordering pizza. I think they call it a pizza party. And I'm like, well, how do you do that? And then well, you buy some pizzas, uh, you get a pool and then oh. you throw the pizzas in the pool and they float because that's what pizzas do. And then you leave. And then you leave. Yeah. <laughs> you dance as you're leaving. They ultimately decide to go to the spooky place to go to the frickin' um, the old McFarlane ranch or farmhouse or whatever farm old mcfarland had a ghost <laughs> Ooh. he drew spawn <laughs> so we see alex driving around in the night um looking for hookers and uh he negotiates a good time quote unquote <laughs> with a freaking uh, hooker yeah you know they they talk a while about what a good time is they're like hey, uh define good time please sir <laughs> <laughs> the stopwatch is running mister and i honestly did not learn the answer i just know it involves not messing up her hair right that is yeah that's that's imperative that's the whole plot of uh, leaving las vegas so um, i thought the plot of that was don't kill yourself with alcohol i know i thought it was that was the goal is you know, oh yeah i forgot just do it don't get a hooker the good time charlies are now sneaking around and I notice that one of the dudes has the blush on. He totally, it's so, my, what is going on with his makeup, dude? It's so good. Do you think it was like, um, well, the only way your cheeks will show up on video camera is if they're very red. I guess. So. I, think, I think they were trying to compensate. <laughs> uh, I didn't say which cheeks. Oh. 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 So oh. one of them says to the other, one of the girls says, all you ever think about is sex. And uh, this place is spooky. 
But uh, then Alex, uh, we see Alex kidnapping the hooker and he stabs her with a needle and brings her back. And uh, the kids are actually there hiding. They are hiding from his headlights as he pulls in to this place. And he's dragging this hooker's corpse, or excuse me, maybe corpse, uh, unconscious dead excuse woman. Excuse you, nice anonymous corpse. <laughs> nice anonymous street corpse. Yeah. <laughs> so he's dragging her and they don't see that, but that's okay. Because it's the next day. And Chris is cleaning the house while her rocking chair rocks. <laughs> and she actually says, like, Becky, you better get your ass in here. <laughs> you better get your ass in here. In order to prove to Becky that this chair has been rocking by itself, she stops it before she calls in the, her in the room. <laughs> And then tells her that it was rocking. And of course, Becky doesn't believe her. <laughs> and she also spends a while like describing what she thought she heard. Um, she thought she heard footsteps, the swishing of silk, a robe. I guess a robe. <laughs> She's very uncertain. Uh, then she calls Seymour. Like Becky encourages her to call Seymour to tell her about these hallucinations she's having. And she's like, I don't want to call him. I hate him. And she will tell him that much shortly. Uh, but then she, she, you know, she agrees. She calls him. Cut to a pool party with our, our funsters, with our good time Charlies having fun, fun, fun. No talking about anything they might have seen the night before. Just nothing. And this is where the editing gets weird with this gang of uh, teenagers here. Uh, but we, like I said, like I've hinted, we'll get back to that later. Because there's a very mm. wonderful, my brain started to like fall apart. I don't know how it was still together at this point, but yeah. yeah. So then we see Chris and <laughs> Seymour having a little talk about her paranormal experiences that she's been having. Now, the important part is the kids are having their pool party at the same pool that he and her are trying to have this intense <laughs> psychological conversation. <laughs> they're splashing, jumping in the water, having a freaking volleyball tournament or whatever they're doing. And the pool... On, on the other side of the pool where they're having their talk, the water is completely still, which makes me think this pool is miles long. <laughs> I mean, possibly. That's what it looked like during the, uh, the ins and outs performance. Oh, my God. So she's she and she tells him about how she sensed the silk and the, and the, the fabrics and stuff. And then she tells him straight up, I despise you and everything you represent. <laughs> Because she's, you know, she's accusing him and Dr. Alex of these immoral experiments. And then Alex wasn't into this stuff before. <laughs> You're doing this. Now, all he cares about is research. He's leaving me for another research. <laughs> we cut to Seymour calling Alex from his man cave. And uh, they're talking and they're detailing the gaslighting they've been doing to Chris with the uh they're complimenting each other on the good job they've been doing with the sound effects <laughs> and the weirdness and then they start to like compliment each other on the other stuff like the chair moving and the ghostly apparition and they're like i'm not doing that are you doing that i'm not doing that so maybe they're doing too good of a job oh. yep yep <sighs> then we get a scene of uh paul's mom celeste the psychic explaining psychic phenomenon to uh to to chris and it's so important that i didn't write anything down that she said <laughs> but that's not important because paul's creeping <laughs> i mean that is that is what he does yeah what he do he, he creep he's creeping around the house while well, well chris isn't looking or well chris isn't home and he takes a bite of a peach and then from the fridge he takes a sip of their strawberry crush and wow. i'm hoping to hell i can find a nice old crush commercial from YouTube. So if I did, I'm putting it right here. Get ready. Now Crush has 10% real fruit juice and a rainbow of flavors. For a taste so real, you'll want to peel it. Peel me a Crush, sweet darling. I want a taste that's bigger than real. Peel me a Crush with 10% juice. It's a feeling I've just got to feel. Peel it down to the natural juice and a taste that's totally wow. And that's when uh, she hears what is probably uh, freaking 
Paul snooping around and she talks herself out of experiencing these sounds. Like, these aren't real. You're not real. This chair doesn't rock. No. <laughs> Go away. Don't bother me. <laughs> uh, Paul has a huge knife. I guess he takes the knife from the, the, the kitchen and then he hides in the closet. And uh, Inez is, uh, without moving her mouth or doing anything different than what she's done before, she's trying to warn Chris about him. But it's too late. He grabs her and everything fades to black. And we, she wakes up with Eleanor standing over her. <laughs> and then Chris recovers perfectly. And they're in an office of some sort going through papers. And Eleanor is really terrible, once again, at keeping any kind of a secret about anything regarding Inez from Chris. But right when Eleanor leaves, Chris finds Inez's passport because the story has been that Inez is out of the country. She went to like Sweden or Switzerland or something, but how can she leave the country if she doesn't have her passport? <laughs> her toothbrush is in here too. <laughs> her teeth will be filthy. There's a couple of good things here um, uh, in, in this long sequence. Um, oh. Inez kind of like she, this is the first time that she materializes fully bodily, I think. And she has such weird ghost energy. Like she holds her arms out straight at her sides. Like she's a stretch Armstrong. Um, <laughs> and there's also one moment that actually made me scream when the camera which is starting out as just a, a static shot straight on looking at Chris just does a Dutch angle. It just like moves from that what? totally static shot into a Dutch angle. That was horrifying. Wow. I missed that. Oh, I'll look for I'll it. Ne I'll never forget it. I'll look for it next time. Mm -hmm. Aerobics time. Speaking of, of, you know, Lucio Fulci's bread and butter from murder rock. It's freaking aerobics. Chris. And her pal, the, the lady from the party, who's a total blabbermouth, they're hanging out together, kind of like working out, but not working out. And this lady is, again, running her mouth about Dr. Alex and Inez and just dropping some more bullshit. I mean, they do literally refer to her as the blabbermouth, a.k.a. the local <laughs> gossip. And yes. here in this scene, yes. she's she's... She's wearing um, a she's wearing um, a spandex bodysuit, but also a, uh, a sleeveless T-shirt underneath that just says "dance." Nice, which is really good. <laughs> and these big rectang these big white rectangular earrings, and a and a oh. headband. She's oh. got a really good look. I like Alice a lot. Gorgeous. Oh, wait, what was her name? Alice. I did not know her name. Thank you, Alice. Yeah, Alice the Blabbermouth. That's oh, how they man. introduce her. Well, she'll yeah. be back later for an important part of the story. <laughs> oh. 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 It cuts to uh, Celeste, Paul's mother, um, freaking suggesting that they use a Ouija board. And she says Ouija, not Ouija. Ouija. She says a Ouija board. Uh, because they're effective means of communicating with the other side. Uh, she also says, uh, quote unquote, I always find a Ouija board handy. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, Chris uh, confronts uh, her stepdaughter, Becky, about uh, the affair that uh, her husband had with Inez. And uh, Becky decides to... Uh, Walk away. Just leaves. <laughs> she gets upset and just walks away. And then we cut back to the Ouija part. Yep. So they, they inserted this moment, not knowing where else to put it. And then we came, come right back to the next scene of them using the Ouija board to uh, freaking contact the dead, which is great. Well, you know, um, uh, uh, Chekhov saying, if you show a Ouija board in the third act... You will also use it five minutes later in the third act. <laughs> uh, and we cut away from this to see that the good time Charlies, they're back to sneaking again. And this is when my brain was broken because I think that all these kids are sneaking to go to the old McFarlane farm again, but it's an extended version of the same scene from earlier. 
Because I think they're all wearing the same outfits. Yeah. So well, I imagine they they filmed it all on the same day. Exactly. So why they have the kids sneaking off to the place the first time and almost seeing the hooker dragging uh, the uh, I I don't maybe they're trying to add tension. I don't know why they had them do this twice. It's blatantly the the doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I love. I it. mean. <laughs> The editing, the the I think the whole uh, um, mo of the editing is just to keep us on our toes. Yes, and in that case, it succeeds beautifully. <laughs> so that's why they got the awards. They swept the awards that season. Yep, the People's Choice. We cut back to the Ouija talking, and now uh, they're trying to contact Julian Celeste's uh, spirit guide, and uh, they immediately start getting messages from the Ouija board, but they're not waiting for it to spell anything. And they missed an opportunity to really drag out the length of this movie by having them spell the, the uh, spirit messages from Inez out letter by letter. I'm really glad they didn't, but other than the yes or no, they don't use the Ouija board for anything else. <laughs> uh, the kids get inside the old McFarland quote unquote farm, and they all crowd into a dark, a darkened room together. And I just started laughing so hard. Because it has no atmosphere, it has there's you can barely see what's going on. It's clearly every character just stuffed into a room. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> the next like ten minutes or so are oppressively dark. I mean, because yeah, we're on video stock here. I mean, it's hard to make this look good on film uh, yep. when you have lighting. And uh, I don't think they had that at all. <laughs> no, no. They uh, they were depending on like street lights coming yep. in from the windows. Yeah. So it's it quite crazy. dark. You don't see much. Things are just happening. Yep. And then um, Eleanor bursts in on Ouija time and she's like, where are the kids? And they're, and they're like, oh, they went to that old McFarlane place. Oh, no. <laughs> we cut back to the kids and the girl reiterates, this place is spooky. And the dude says, oh, you candy ass. And of course, Paul, this whole time is creeping around, being creepy. Uh, And my favorite character, God only knows what this girl's name is, is the blonde girl in the pigtails Mm -hmm. who feels like she's from a different movie because she acts like she's playing a child. (laughs) And she says the immortal line, wait till I get a hold of those jerks. (laughs) <laughs> because they think that the guys and the other uh, teenagers have abandoned them in this old place. And so they're like, I'll show them. Meanwhile, there's a couple making out. The dude gets handsy. Uh, and she says, no, I don't want to do this here. No, no, stop it. And uh, when she won't have sex with him, he's, he tells her, I'll get you for this. <laughs> a lot of revenge being sworn in oh, this section no. of the film. It's terrible. Revenge and, unfulfilled. Thank God. And then on the way to the McFarland place, frickin' Chris is finally like interrogating Eleanor about what she knows about Inez. And she goes, What happened to Inez? And Eleanor says, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. Oh my God. Oh, that made me laugh. So then inside, Chris sees Inez and she asks her, What do you want from me? And what do you want girl did paul get trapped in a well what are you trying to say <laughs> oh my god is the tractor on fire chris is then scared by a fake arm that's hanging from the uh the ceiling in this this old farm it, it just like it just looks like a something you'd see in like a shop that special effects people have it, it's not even like grotesque it's like literally an, a mold for an arm so you can make copies of it. I don't even know what. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's like just a piece of plastic. And she, but the funny part is, is she yells, Becky, Celeste, Eleanor, Joe. (laughs) And I don't know who Joe is. But then she finds the body of the dead hooker. Uh, This hooker that, that he picked up earlier, that Alex picked up earlier. She is uh, hanging from the wall by her neck with a chain around her neck and there's blood around it. So not so much um, lobotomized unless no, that's what murderized murderized. Hey, yeah. 
Oh, boy. But then they flip the lights on, and Seymour and Alex uh, are threatening the kids. I don't even think they're even in the McFarland place. I feel like they're in Chris's house or somewhere, and they're threatening. It's like the next day. Yeah. And they're threatening the kids to keep quiet about what they saw. What did they see? <laughs> what the fuck happened? Maybe we were in their perspective, so they saw everything that we saw. Yeah. And, and I then, know. well, I think the idea was that Alex and Seymour just convinced Chris that she's crazy. She didn't see anything at the old McFarlane farm. So it's just the next day, and <laughs> Alex is on the phone with Seymour. And he's totally just full on letting his evil hang out. And just, he literally says, we're going to kill Chris. That's what we're going to do. As, as Chris, is, Chris is eavesdropping. <laughs> She's like, are they talking about me? <laughs> There's a lot of people named Chris in this city. It can't be. It must be another Chris. <laughs> And of course, we find out that the hooker was actually supposed to be getting a lobotomy, but uh, Alex was interrupted, or, or somebody was interrupted. And then uh, Chris makes her escape. She jumps into her car, and the awesome chase music comes on. And then uh, Dr. Alex is chasing her, and they are exceeding the speed limit, maybe. Like, they're going like 35, dude. Yeah, I love the synths that uh, yes. accompany this. Uh, That's very so good. good. Yes. So they, they they pull over at the woods, get out of their cars, and then Alex chases Chris through the woods. And then, my favorite part, Chris gets back in the car and drives <laughs> off. And then Alex gets back in his car and then they just leave. And uh, she goes to see Celeste. And she's like, I'm in trouble. And Celeste is like, yo, dog, I'm sorry, but... My son is too important to me, so I'm going to be a sellout. <laughs> and she totally sells her out to uh, Alex, who's managed to catch up with her. Damn. That's this cold blooded. Is, dude, this is the bottom of page four. We're rocking my notes. Yeah. So now Chris is on the operating table. On, oh yeah. on the operating table. Um, she's about to get um, lobotomized, presumably. But the best part is. Seymour is complaining because in the hospital, the, the hospital slash um, apartment building or, or ho yeah. hotel, whatever this place is. Renee uh, Harmon's living room. Yes. Uh, he's complaining because of the storm that's brewing outside. It's a nice, dark and stormy night. But he says, I find it difficult to function during an electrical storm. Um, I mean, I th I feel like they should find it difficult to function because they it, they're in a totally dark room. <laughs> oh my god! With just one overhead light, kind of shining down on Renee's face. Yep, that's it. But then even that goes out, and we get two things: we get lasers, <laughs> and we get Inez backlit by lasers. Yeah, um, she is is Inez's laser light show. Oh my lord. Um, Led Zeppelin is not playing, but I guess it's just because they couldn't afford it. Nope. Nope, they were not. This is not uh, the uh, the laser light show at Stone Mountain in Georgia. This is something much different. Then the gore sequence comes. Yes. Which is the, the uh, very, very <laughs> not flattering uh, wax sculpture of Inez uh, begins <laughs> to melt. They, they do a quick switch with her face looking... <laughs> very menacingly into the camera backlit with the red and they cut real fast to her wax face which is hideous and they start yep. melting it with presumably a blow dryer and she is dude, melting like a walmart candle woo when that skull starts showing up through the freaking thing and i was like well they did this like this is this was the effects budget the lasers and this melty head i'm so proud of them because even if you know it's fake, it's still disgusting to think about how to clean that crap up. Like, yeah, the, uh, you, you have to hope they had a tarp down. It's so nasty. But there's also in this sequence, because it's now in pitch black darkness, Alex is supposed to be scared and terrified, but you can't see his face. No. Paul is there with a knife. Is he? I maybe. But there's there's a there's a there's definitely a knife that's being reflected in the laser so it might be paul i'm not sure and okay. then stab 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 and you have to assume that dr alex has been killed but 
we're going to find out in dialogue later that he went insane. What? Oh, really? I thought everybody died from fright. I maybe. All I know is that <laughs> all I could think about when uh, Inez's face was melting is how much I hate fondant icing. Mm, really, yeah. I hate that stuff. Ugh. Uh, Give me that buttercream icing. Mm, well, I mean, my blood is eighty percent buttercream, so it's fine. <laughs> buttercream in July. <laughs> oh yeah. So <laughs> that should be the name of my album. <laughs> So then we have Chris and uh, Becky walking through the woods. Uh, they're doing that thing where the dialogue starts before they start walking. So it's really unnatural shot. <laughs> it's so good. And uh, yeah, they just freaking explain all kinds of shit that I didn't pay attention to. Yeah. Ra- wrapping up this plot. But more importantly, <laughs> Paul. Paul is still freaking uh, stalking them. <laughs> still stalking. He appears. He's actually done nothing but no, stalk the whole movie. No. Yeah. He, he he runs after them and it's a freeze frame and then the creepy awesome music starts playing that the closing credits have this really cool theme with a la 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 la, la like creepy ladies going la 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 at the end. Oh man. Whew, that is I the like, Wow. I like the closing bit of wisdom that Chris gives us about oh, yeah. so, something along the lines of like God asking us to live fully each day he gives us. Right before the, uh, you know, Paul the... Pa- I mean, he is a killer, technically. Yes. He just hasn't killed anybody in a while. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, skipping behind them. It's a nice little bit of irony. I think somebody says, just look at God's creation around you. That might be one uh, of the lines there. But yeah, uh, that, yeah that's yeah. that's Night of Terror, folks. Holy shit. The sequel, not sequel to Frozen Scream, you didn't know, you did not, didn't not want. Man, they should have called it Frozen Terror. Ooh, Thawed Horror. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, slightly chilly uh, <laughs> Insane Asylum? Breezy. 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 What? Uh... So there, there's a character in this movie called Shrimpy. I don't remember that person. Yeah, I that was one of the girls. I was one of the okay. girls, I believe. But Shrimpy. Shrimpy. Man. Shrimpy. Maybe that's the name of the hooker. That's rough. That's rough. <laughs> Hey, you want a good time? Call Shrimpy. (laughs) (laughs) So. Oh, my God. Could that have been Inez? No, that was uh, Chris. That was Chris. That's very. Do that again with a German accent, honey. (laughs) She said, how did you know it wasn't? (laughs) Uh, hmm, Fair point. Ah, touche. Or in German, touche. So, Jeffrey, how did you like night of terror 1986 um it definitely grew on me um as i mentioned before i was kind of just annoyed at the beginning um <laughs> when it kept cutting uh pretty regularly i guess it only does it like three or four times but it was kind of annoying when it kept cutting totally meaninglessly to frozen scream just because i was enjoying the parts that were not frozen yes scream. exactly yeah, well, thankfully, you know, it does settle down and becomes its own thing after about the first 30 minutes. So, um, yeah, I, I like this one quite a bit. It's both a film that is full of incident, but none of the incidents are of any consequence. Um, so it's uh, it's not one that's an easy recommend um, for anyone outside of our listenership. So anybody who listens to the show, go, go watch it. I think you'll enjoy it. How did you feel about this one? I, I'm bordering on loving it right at the edge of loving this. Like, just like you, um, as soon as it started, I had that bad feeling like, is this going to be a thing where every time I pick a shot on video movie <laughs> for our series that we do, is this going to be another one Jeffrey doesn't enjoy? Uh, but as soon as it, it got over it, the, the crap, which was the reliance on padding from another film, um, I really enjoyed this a lot. I mean, I was laughing. I was having a good time. It's one of those ones that, much like the, for lack of a better term, the bread and butter of when you and I do a show, yeah. uh, is the details. The details really make these things come alive. And when something is edited this poorly, where mm-hmm. even I notice, because I don't, I'm dumb, what were they doing with the order of these events? It's so cute. I guess they didn't want any scenes to go on too long, but then it has scenes that go on too long. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, that's why they edit other scenes in between them, you know? Yeah. Keeps things fresh. And uh, I definitely gave myself something to prepare for this by, by like, in reverse. I watched Things for the first time, which, you know, has a reputation for being a, a, a VHS movie, but it was shot on film. Mm-hmm. But uh, that, you know, the production values of that made me appreciate the care and love that went into <laughs> Night of Terror, even if it was slapdash and horrible. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad we covered this one. Um, I don't even know if we're gonna do another VHS one. I'm I'm like wondering if you've come up with uh, an idea for what we would do next. Um, I will definitely think of something. I would like to do okay. another one for sure. It'll be a surprise, folks. Yeah, it'll be a surprise, even uh, to uh, us because we don't know yet. <laughs> it'll be a good one. Don't worry. <laughs> Yay! Well, Jeffrey, thank you for for joining me once again. You're so welcome. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna slip into all this VHS mold we got. And get all get that uh, VHS dust in our. Uh, you don't ooh. want the mold though. The mold's like the worst thing. You can't get rid of it. Yeah. It like well, you can, but you got to be careful, and it's really intensive, and it can spread to other ones if you don't. Can I take care of it? Can I give you my advice? Can I give you and the listeners at home my only piece of VHS care and maintenance advice I know? Mm, are you going to say get rid of them and don't have them? No, 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 no. I'm, well, obviously, if you want to like maintain a relationship with someone <laughs> uh, who doesn't collect VHS. No, uh, this comes from um, our dearly departed uh, Nafa, who worked in the media center of our library and was very good at uh, f- repairing VHS tapes mm-hmm. uh, and, and taking them <clears throat> apart and getting them to actually work when, they, when all hope seemed lost. Um, when you get a tape that you want to watch or dump to DVDR, which is the smart thing to do, so you don't have to watch it so often, uh, you uh, fast forward to the end and then rewind back to the beginning and it loosens the tape up. So if the tape has been sitting for many years and hasn't gotten lots of play, then you can freaking uh, loosen it up and should play pretty nicely. Interesting. Yeah, I've always heard not to rewind them um, See, frequently. I have never... I mean, I've heard that from other people. I, I definitely rewound my tapes. I, I know that there's a lot of torque... That happens at the end when you rewind or fast forward a uh, tape. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear that shit. Oh, but, you can. Yep. But uh, yeah, you got to, I mean, how do you watch it from the beginning if you can't rewind it? Well, no, I guess it's just like, don't rewind it every time you watch something. Oh, okay. I get you. Cool. You know, it's like, so if you're done watching a movie, just leave it leave at the it. end, wherever okay. you, you stopped it. Then, and then you rewind it, it next time. There yeah. you go. See, look at yeah, that. Yeah, you you yeah, brought yeah. the realness. Yeah, the realness. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> and. Folks, thank you for listening. You guys are a big part of why my voice is so amazingly sensual. (laughs) I don't know. Thank you. Bye. If you hadn't screwed her, maybe she wouldn't have tried to screw you. This is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is The Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives.